Here we go again. Welcome back. This time we are talking about the fundamental orders of Connecticut. Now this is going to be a very brief but very important part of our story. Uh, this is the, the United States traces the history of its constitution back to this. This is what we consider the first written constitution. So what is it? It is a constitution. It is a list of rules by which a government must follow. So it is the rule book for government. You hear constitution, you should think, all right, what, what, what guides the government? Oh, well, they, do they have a rule book or something? Yes, it's called the constitution. And this one was created in 1639. The fundamental orders were adopted by the Connecticut Colony Council on January 14, 1639. So they were adopted, that means they were approved. The orders describe the government set up by the Connecticut River towns. So Connecticut has a series of rivers. Uh, back then you didn't have cars, and these were very early colonists, so they hadn't even had a lot of time to bring enough horses or things like that over here, because remember, Horses were not native to uh, the continents of North and South America. The Spanish brought those uh, way back when, but here in New England, this part of the story, we're not anywhere near New Spain, so horses really haven't had time to, to travel up there yet. We're still settling with, if there's water, we can sail up and down the river, and that was the best method of travel they had. So these Connecticut River towns, they were where people were living, and they got together and they set up this uh, this constitution, this first constitution, the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut. And so they set its structure and its powers. This would be the government we're talking about here. So the government of Connecticut, under the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, would have the features of a written constitution and is considered by some as the first written constitution in the Western tradition. So not just in the United States, but in Western culture. And Western culture includes Europe. So England, France, Scotland, Ireland, Germany, Sweden, uh, a lot of others. I'm not going to go through the whole list. And this has earned Connecticut its nickname as the Constitution State. Thomas Hooker was an influential Puritan colonial minister who founded the colony of Connecticut, and it was his sermon that inspired the fundamental orders of Connecticut. So I'm going to give you a little bit uh, of extra detail on Thomas Hooker real quick. Uh, in 1636, Thomas Hooker left Massachusetts Bay, and he led about 100 people to the Connecticut River. Uh, he originally had come over as part of the Massachusetts colony, but he decided, this isn't working out, I want to start a new one somewhere else. And Hooker wanted to leave the Massachusetts Bay Colony because he believed the government needed limitations. It needed to not be so nebulous and can do whatever it wants. Uh, so he and the settlers, they created the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, uh, which created a legislative body, a group of people that the, the, the regular people would vote, have representatives, they would go be a part of this uh, representative assembly, this body that would, a uh, group that would vote on things, and they would make decisions. So you, the regular person, had control over your own lives because you controlled who got to make the laws. Um, so in, in the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, it is ordered that there shall be two general assemblies. So they're going to meet twice a year back then. Um, Thomas Hooker is considered the founder of Connecticut. His picture is on the document you're looking at right now. So, and why did he leave? He left because he, beloved, he believed that the government in Massachusetts was too powerful. Um, and one of the fascinating things is that Hooker believed in um, something called I can remember, universal Christian suffrage. And suffrage is a word that's going to come back. You're going to hear this several times throughout uh, this year. Suffrage is the right to vote. If you do not have suffrage, you cannot vote. 
So I know it sounds like the word suffer, but you are suffering if you do not have suffrage. And Hooker, Thomas Hooker, was very ahead of his time. He said, anybody who's a Christian should be allowed to vote. And that was very different from the other people at his time. Most people at that time believed only those who were white and owned land and were a man. Were, were a man. So white, own land, and your man. Those would be the only people who could vote. Uh, Thomas Hooker said, no, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian at all, that should be the only requirement. Then you can vote. Because you're a Christian, in his mind, that meant that you were a good person and that you were, you were of a good soul and that you should be allowed to participate. Um, now, he wanted to limit government. How, what was an example that the fundamental orders of Connecticut did to do that? Well, the same person in Connecticut could not be governor for two years in a row. And also, because the people were electing their representatives, the people could elect different representatives to do something different if they didn't like what the government was doing. So there's a couple examples of uh, the limitations we're talking about here. So, this constitution was for the colonial government of Hartford, which is part of Connecticut, uh, and was similar to the government Massachusetts had set up. However, this order gave men more voting rights and made more men eligible to run for elected positions. The Fundamental Orders of Connecticut is a very short document. There's not a whole lot in it, but contains some principles, some ideas that were later applied in creating the United States government. And government is based in the in the rights of an individual. So the individual holds the real power because they're the ones who get to vote. And the orders spell out some of those rights, as well as how they are insured, protected by the government. The role of government is to protect your rights. That's why it's there. It provides that all free men, it still had to be free, it couldn't be a slave, share in electing those in government and he uses secret paper ballots, so you didn't have to tell anyone who you voted for. The Fundamental Orders of Connecticut states that the powers of the government and some limits within which that power is exercised. So it says this is what the government can do, and these are the, some of the things that it can't do. I sure hope that this helped you out, and I hope that you're doing well.